Where are you from, Penang? Malaysia. Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Mm. My friend, Brother Siwan, he's uh, from Subang Jaya Buddhist Association. Mm. He's a vice president of the association. Mm. You have many members? About 3,000. 3,000. What but is your activity? What uh, are your activities? Mostly uh, Sunday Puja, Sunday School for Children, and then uh, meditation retreat, but maybe about four or five times a year. Mm. Every Sunday you, you meet in a temple? Or in yes, a yes, we do. We do. Dharma talk every Sunday. Mm. Uh, also meditation practice on Monday and, and Thursday. Metta in Vipassana. Uh, chanting also. Mm-hmm. This is at the temple or at a at the temple. A temple. Yes. We have monks there. Ah uh, yes, well, but uh, our monk is also traveling, so some other monks from uh, some other center will come. I see. Are they Malaysian or are they Thai? The other is a Malaysian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The visiting monks are Malaysian uh, and sometimes uh, from different countries. Mm-hmm. Thailand and also who, who normally conduct the, the meeting? A monk or a, a lay person? Uh, there is a exco committee, lay people. Mm-hmm. They take care of the running. Okay, he should be the one answering. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a committee to manage the temple, yes. so the monk don't have to involve in the management. Yes. So they more concentrate on the Dharma. Yeah, right. When you have activity, you normally have a monk to conduct the activity or on the uh, Monk will give um, meditation and dharma talk. Uh, and you also and retreat. You also have dana for monks in the oh, morning. Oh yes, 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 yes. Every day, Every day. breakfast, lunch. Mm. Breakfast, lunch. I see. So where have you been in Thailand? Uh, this trip we have been to Rayong, uh, Wat Pipali Wanaram Bankai Ajanda. All of us, including me, we have a five days retreat there. Mm. And then today we check, uh, yesterday we check in to Wat Yang for uh, two days retreat. Mm. And going back tomorrow. I see. Mm. Can you ask question? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Do we have permission to record? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You can put it right here. Come closer. Yeah, maybe we can come, come closer. We can have a better recording. Now, off a little. Yes, Ajahn, we would like to find, um, ask for Ajahn's uh, explanation on uh, mindfulness mm-hmm. and awareness, mm-hmm. the difference, and uh, how we practice in our meditation and also cultivate in, in our daily life. Mm-hmm. Mindfulness is like paying attention to a certain thing. Mm-hmm. That's being mindful. Mm-hmm. Like when you are doing something, you pay attention to what you do. Mm-hmm. That is being mindful. Yes. Normally your mind doesn't like to pay attention for long. Mm-hmm. Your mind likes to go think about other things mm-hmm. while you do things. If this is the case, then it's called no mindfulness. Mm-hmm. If you have mindfulness, you will pay attention 100% with whatever you do at the moment. Mm-hmm. This is what we call mindfulness of the body. You use the body as your your object of mindfulness. Mm-hmm. You keep watching your body, every activity, every movement of your body, mm-hmm. from the time you open up your eyes, when you get up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to your body. When it's lying down, no, it's lying down. When it's getting up, no, that is getting up. Mm-hmm. When it's standing up knows that is standing up. Mm-hmm. Always watch your body. This is being mindful. Mm-hmm. This is the way to develop mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Because you need mindfulness to bring the mind 
to samadhi, mm -hmm. to calm. Because if you don't have mindfulness, your mind will run here and there, think about this and that. Mm -hmm. But if you f force it to pay attention to one thing, like your body, then it cannot go think about this or that. Mm -hmm. But this is theoretical. In real, t in real life, it's not easy mm -hmm. to force your your mind to pay attention to your body all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of uh, patience and trying to develop this mindfulness. Mm -hmm. As you try, you 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 will improve, and your mindfulness will become stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you will be able to always pay attention to your body mm -hmm. or to any other object that you want your mind to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Because when you sit for in samadhi, you pay attention to your breathing instead. Mm -hmm. So if you have mindfulness, then you can pay attention to your breathing. Mm -hmm. And by paying attention to the breathing, it's just to be aware of the, the breathing. No need to force the breathing. Mm -hmm. No need to manipulate the, the breathing. Mm -hmm. Just use the breathing as your object of mm -hmm. mindfulness. Just be aware. If you're breathing in, just be aware that you're breathing in. When you're breathing out, just be aware you're breathing out. Mm -hmm. If your breath is long, just be aware it is long. If it's short, know it is short. Mm -hmm. If it's fine, know it, it is fine. When it's coarse, know it is coarse. Just mm -hmm. know, okay. no need to manipulate, no need to mm -hmm. do anything with the breath, just, just the breathing, watch. just watch it. If you can continually oh. watching the breathing without thinking about the thing, then your mind will eventually drop into calm. Mm -hmm. When it does, we call samadhi. When it drops into calm, then sometimes the body disappears from your awareness. Uh, your breathing disappears, and all that is left is the aware, the awareness itself, of the 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 one who knows, the knower. That's the mind. That's that's the real characteristic of the mind. The true mind. Yeah, it's the the, the one who knows, mm -hmm. the knowing, the awareness. When the mind stops thinking, then everything will disappear except the awareness. So your thinking rises and ceases, but your awareness never ceases. It's always there, but you just don't see it because your thinking blocks your awareness. But without the awareness, you won't be able to know what I'm talking yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. At least the, the, the one who knows, who knows that I'm talking to you and acknowledge everything that I say and acknowledge everything that you think. See. So this one that doesn't rise or cease, it's always there. Mm -hmm. It's just that you don't get to see it because it's blocked by your thought. See. Mm -hmm. Your thought is a mo it's what you usually see, not yourself, not not, not the awareness. Mm -hmm. The awen the awareness sees the thought but doesn't see itself, doesn't see the awareness because it's being uh, being sort of blocked by the thought, by mm -hmm. your thinking. But when you stop thinking, then there's nothing left except the awareness. Then you can see, oh, this is the, the true mind. Mm -hmm. So when the samadhi improves, the awareness will improve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you will be more aware of things, mm -hmm. and you will learn how to uh, use the mind in a productive and a profitable way. Right now, you don't know how to use your mind mm -hmm. profitably. Mm -hmm. You're using it to hurt yourself mm -hmm. because the mind doesn't know how to behave properly. Mm -hmm. The mind is being uh, deceived by the delusion. The mind doesn't know that where the true happiness is. Mm -hmm. So the delusion you deceive the mind to think that in order to be happy, you have to have possession, you have to have people, you have to have things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Power. Yeah. <laughs> but all these things, they are mm -hmm. temporary. Yeah. You gain and then you lose. Mm -hmm. When you 
have them, you're happy. When you lose them, you become sad. So you have to re-educate the mind mm-hmm. to tell you that the true happiness is in samadhi, in calm, mm-hmm. in the in being alone, in being not not possessive, not not having any possession, mm-hmm. things or people. Mm-hmm. So this is what you have to teach the mind after you have samadhi. Because if you don't have samadhi, the mind still don't know where the real happiness is. But once you have samadhi, then you know that the real happiness is in in being calm, being uh, peaceful. And the thing that will come and destroy this peace and happiness is the desire for things, for people. When you see this, then you know that you have to resist your desire. And in order to be able to resist your desire, you have to use the Buddha's wisdom. The wisdom to see that everything is, is, not, is not happiness. Everything that you think brings you happiness actually brings you suffering. Because they don't last. They are temporary. And you think you have a, a wife or a husband who will make you happy. But when they leave, when they die, or when they separate from you, you will become sad. So, so this is what you have to contemplate, mm-hmm. to teach the mind that everything that the mind thinks brings it happiness, actually brings it sorrow, because they are impermanent. Mm-hmm. They come and go. They don't last forever. Sooner or later, one day you will separate from them. What's the number truth, Dukkha? Yes. Yeah, dukkha, aging, sickness and death, separation from the things that you love, facing the things that you don't like, mm-hmm. namely your attachment to your five khanda. Mm-hmm. This is the, the suffering. We, we don't know the body is not doesn't belong to us, mm-hmm. and we are attached to the body. We think it belongs to us, mm-hmm. and then we have the desire for the, for the body to last forever. When it doesn't last, then you become unhappy. So you have to teach the mind the truth that the body doesn't belong to you and it doesn't bring you happiness. It brings you sorrow. Mm-hmm. It's better to let go, be willing to let it get sick, get old and die. Mm-hmm. When you have no attachment and you let it be, then you will not be unhappy, you will not be sad. This is the, the step after you have to do, after you come out of your samadhi mm-hmm. to remind, to teach your mind the new truth, the real truth. The truth that everything that you think is brings you happiness actually brings you sadness. Mm-hmm. So you must not have any desire for them. You must get rid of your desire for everything. Then you will then remain peaceful and happy forever. For us to really realize the truth of things, for us to be really able to let go, Ajahn mentioned about uh, we must have samadhi. Mm-hmm. But there are like different samadhi, like Apanya, Vachara, and Kanika. And Ajahn elaborate uh, mm-hmm. on the samadhi helping us to really realize and able to. The happiness you want to develop is called Apana Samadhi. The smart in which the, the mind become concentrated and become one, mm-hmm. and be stop all the thinking, and all that is just emptiness, and the the one who knows the awareness. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of samadhi you want to have because it gives you the strength to to resist your desire, and mm-hmm. also gives you happiness, yeah. real happiness, mm-hmm. is peace of mind. And you can get this real happiness by having this kind of samadhi. We call apana samadhi. Kanika samadhi is the same kind of samadhi, but it's of shorter duration. Mm -hmm. When you first practice, your mind will experience kanika samadhi. Because you don't have strong mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Your mindfulness can bring the mind into calm for briefly, then it will spring back due to the resistance of your desire. Your, resi- your desire is still very strong. Mm-hmm. 
So you can only bring your mind into calm briefly, then it will come back out. This is called Kanika Samadhi. But, but after you have developed stronger mindfulness, then when your mind becomes peaceful and calm, it will stay there for a long time. Mm-hmm. So you want to get this kind of Samadhi. You want to keep the mind calm as long as possible. Even in daily life? Yeah, well, first you want to calm it when you're into Samadhi. Mm-hmm. But once you have this, when you come out of Samadhi, then this calm will still follow you. Mm-hmm. But it will eventually disappear because when you start thinking, when you start desiring for things, mm-hmm. then this will destroy the calm that you have achieved from Samadhi. So you want to, if you want to maintain this calm, when you come out of Samadhi, you have to control your thinking. Mm-hmm. Not to let it think in the way of desiring for things. Control it to think about anicca, dukkha, anatta. This will stop your mind from desiring for things. But as a lay person, it's not possible because when you work, you only think about permanent. You don't think about mm-hmm. you know, something good, something forever. You know, mm-hmm. so it it contradicts your practice and your your way of life contradicts. Mm. In order to make your way of life and your practice in harmony, you have to become a monk. Yeah. Then, then everything will go in the same direction. But right now your practice and your your way of life is contradicting each other. Mm. So you're experiencing a, a tug of war. Yeah. When you go to the temple, you find peace. When you come back to the house, you find desire to have this and have that. Mm-hmm. and you get all agitated and you get suffering. Mm-hmm. So after you practice for a while, you realize that you have to uh, adjust your way of life if you want to move forward in your mm-hmm. practice. Or else you will not be able to move forward because your way of life and your practice running against each other. Mm-hmm. So you have to turn your way of life around, make it to become in the same direction as you practice. This is what happened to people. Mm-hmm. When you first start, you don't know this. Just start oh, practicing will bring you peace and happiness. But then you realize that you only get so much. After that, you need more than that. You need to turn your, your life around. Mm-hmm. Or else you will not be able to get more than that. Mm-hmm. Right now, you can only do it on your day off, like mm-hmm. weekend, you know. But on, your, on the day you go to work, you go different directions. So, so you're going back and forth. You know? mm. So you're not really getting very far. If you want to go very far, then you have to go in, in one direction. You don't go back and forth. And the other samadhi that I, you asked, Upachara Samadhi. Mm. Upachara Samadhi is a samadhi that, that experiences all sorts of nimittas. You know? But you, your mind becomes calm and then you start to experience uh, different psychic activities, like maybe special psychic powers, uh, being able to, to read other people's mind, uh, be able to see uh, things that you cannot normally see with your eyes, seeing uh, celestial beings, you know, devatas. This, this, this kind of samadhi is not good. It, it doesn't bring you peace and happiness. It's just like going to a movie. Mm-hmm. But it's, instead of using, watching the movie with your, your body eyes, you use your, your mental eyes to watch the movie. So if you have this kind of samadhi, you should ignore it. Try to bring mindfulness, use mindfulness to bring it into apana samadhi. I continue on on meditating. If you're watching your breathing, go back to your breathing. If you use uh, Bhutto, just repeat Bhutto. Or if you have strong mindfulness, pull your mind away from that. Because if you follow what you see, then you become immersed, and then you will not have peace, because your mind can still have desire for what you see, what you experience. And when you come out of samadhi, you, you, don't, you, feel, you don't feel rested. You don't have the peace and happiness. Mm-hmm. So you don't want this kind of happiness, this kind of samadhi. 
but it only happened to very few people from what I heard. Only very few people have the special ability mm -hmm. to, to experience this special uh, things, you know. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. I want to ask now, like now I'm listening to Ajahn talks, then I'm not like this one, and I have feeling inside. What kind of feeling is it? <coughs> what kind of feeling uh -huh. you have inside? You have to know, you don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're the one who feels. There are three kinds of feeling, good, bad, or neutral feeling, that's all. And they are impermanent. They change back and forth. Don't be attached to them. Just be aware of them, like being aware of your breathing. If, if you have good feeling, don't, don't have desire for it to last, because it don't last. When you have bad feeling, don't have desire for it to disappear, because you can, cannot get rid of it right away. It will come and go by itself. All you have to do is just just to beware, and don't become attached to any of these three type of feelings. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can find the way to make a certain kind of feeling happen, like peaceful feeling. So you want to have peaceful feeling, man maintain mindfulness, develop mindfulness. The more mindfulness you have, the more peaceful and calm will your mind and your feeling will be. If you want to stop bad feeling, stop, this, stop, stop your desire, because all your bad feeling arise from your desire. When you decide to have something and you don't get it, you feel bad, right? But if you don't have any, any desire, then it doesn't matter what you get. So try not try to get rid of your desire, and then you will get rid of your bad feeling. And try to m develop mindfulness, then you will, you will get good feeling, peaceful feeling. Ajahn, the mindfulness, sati, sati, yeah. Ajahn, the, the sati, and the, Ajahn, just now, Ajahn, explain what is it, uh, sati and sampajana, uh -huh. the mindfulness and the awareness. Uh, awareness is not sampajana. See, sampajana is the continuous mindfulness. Continuous. When mindfulness becomes mindful, it becomes sampajana. Continuous mindfulness. Yeah, yeah. But awareness is the one who knows when the mind becomes peaceful, when the mind enter into singularity when it becomes one, then this awareness or the one who knows will this will will appear. It's already there but we, we don't see it. When the mind is is not is active you cannot see this. But when the mind stops all the activity then you this thing will will appear. Uh, I then another question. When let's say we aware of any thoughts or any thoughts arises in the mind when the mind That's aware, mindfulness. That's mindfulness. mindfulness. The knowing is on my phone. No, the, of the, the knowing is, is in the back of the knowing is 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 what it's very hard to, to separate mindfulness from the knowing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the knowing is always there but sometimes it's not with the what you're supposed to know, see. So you need mindfulness to bring the the knowing to be be what we are supposed to know. Mm -hmm. Like if you're supposed to be mindful of your body. If if there's no mindfulness you might know something else. You might go. So again, the, uh, the mindfulness and the, the continuous mindfulness is together. Yeah, it's, it's the one that brings, that pulls the mind toward inside instead of going outside. Mm -hmm. Your thought wants to bring your, your, your awareness outside mm -hmm. to the various activities, mm -hmm. but you want to bring it inside, so you need to have mindfulness to bring uh, the mind inside. The awareness inside. There is a common term that some teachers say, sati sampajana. So that is. Sati is just uh, mindfulness. That that is not continuous. Eh? When you you can be mindful, and then the next moment you can be forgetful already. Mm -hmm. So, but if you have mindfulness all the time, then it becomes sampajana. sampajana. But it's not aware. It's not the. It's not the one who knows. The one who knows only happen when the mind stops thinking, and then you 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 see the one who knows, the awareness. Because that's all that is left after the mind stops thinking. Let me give you a comparison. Comparison. 
you have a TV screen, right? Mm -hmm. When you turn on the TV, you got pictures on the screen. So you don't see the screen, you, don't, you see the picture. If you want to see the screen, you have to turn off the picture. See, mm -hmm. see what I mean? Your thinking is like the picture on the screen, and the awareness is the one behind the, the picture, the thoughts. See? When, you, when you turn off the thought, then all that is left is just the awareness. It's like the screen. When you turn off the pic, the, 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 the screen, what, do, what is left? Just the screen, right? And the glass. And the glass. Yeah. You don't see the picture anymore. But when you have the picture, you don't see the glass. Mm -hmm. You don't see the screen. So your thinking is like the picture on, mm -hmm. of your mind. Mm -hmm. You have to turn off your, turn off the, your thought. Mm -hmm. When you turn off the thought, then you can see the, your mind. Mm -hmm. See the one who knows. Um, when and how should we reflect and contemplate? Uh, you can do any time when you're not in meditation, see. But it just depends on your ability, your mindfulness, whether you can direct your mind to reflect and, and think in the way of Dhamma, dhamma or not. Mm -hmm. If your mindfulness is not strong, it won't be able to direct it to think, to contemplate, to reflect. Yeah. You would like to think about making money, going on holidays, and you know. this is not really how you think, right? So anytime you can bring it back, do it, but normally you can only do it when you have strong mindfulness. If you have strong mindfulness, then it means you've got, you have samadhi. See. Once you have strong mindfulness, have samadhi, then it's easy for you to direct your mind to reflect. In the, in, in the way of the Dhamma. But theoretically you should do it all the time when you're not in Samadhi. But you don't, right? You usually think about where am I going to go tomorrow and instead of thinking about Anicca Dukkha Anatta, instead of contemplating of the body being getting sick, getting old and die, you hardly think about it. Because you don't have strong mindfulness enough to direct the mind to think. The mind is being directed by your defilement, your kilesa, to think about money, to think about uh, finding happiness with these people or that people or this thing or that thing or this place or that place. That's all you think about because you don't have strong mindfulness to, to direct the mind to think in the way of the Dhamma. So you need to develop mindfulness first. When you have strong mindfulness, then you can tell the mind, contemplate on the body, nature, yeah. impermanence, yeah. anatta, not self. You know. Because you need to contemplate a lot too until it, you don't forget, that's the whole point. Right now you keep forgetting the truth, you see, and you being substitute the truth with the false. Yeah. You think the body will last, right? You think the body will be healthy, doesn't get sick. You never think that the body will die, right? See? So this is defilement or delusion, directing your mind to think this way, to forget the truth. So you have to remind yourself of the truth as much as possible. The Buddha said you have to reflect every breath of your, every breath. He told Ananda, Ananda, he asked Ananda, his, uh, his, it's a tendon. Yeah. Ananda, how many times you reflect on death? Ananda said, maybe four or five times a day. But the Buddha said, this is not good. You're being reckless. You're being heedless. You're not mindful. If you are mindful, then you have to think every breath. Breathing in, when you breathe in, when you don't breathe out, you die. When you breathe out and you don't breathe in, you die. <laughs> you should think like this all the time. Then you, then you will be mindful. See. So this is the this is what you have to do. You ask me when should you reflect every breath. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> 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 uh, Ajahn, I have another question. Uh, when the mind, Ajahn, when the mind uh, see the arising of let's say the attachment, the arising of attachment. So when the mind knows it, is it is it awareness or is it uh, mindfulness? The, the arising of the attachment 
or whatever like anger or what. When the mind sees that... It doesn't matter what, who see or what. Okay. The point is, if, can you get rid of the attachment or not? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the point you should be interested in. Mm. Yeah. The point yeah. is to get rid of your attachment. And you can only get rid of it if you see it is as an ijang dukkang anatta. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> we, we all have been Buddhist for quite a number of years. So attending uh, Dhamma, to- uh, Dhamma talk, also practicing dana and also meditation. But it's very frustrating. You know, sometimes we go in and come out, go in and come out. The progress are not very good. So sometimes, how do you make uh, a decision that you want to go a bit maybe longer and try to get a bit more steady progress? How do you come to make this kind of, you know, like a brave decision or something like that? Well, you just have to go into retreat you know, and devote all your time to the practice. That's the only time. That's the only way to 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 advance, to move forward. If you do both things, you know, practice and have your daily activities, they are in conflict with one another. So you don't get much. You get some, you know, it's better than not practicing at all. Mm-hmm. But if you want more than what you can get now, you have to devote, devote more time for your practice. Time is the essential uh, ingredient. It depends on what what you give, what time you, you you give it to. If you give time to your practice, you'll get more result from your practice. If you give time to your daily activity, then you get more out from your daily activities. It's time you only have 24 hours a day. Yeah. Everybody has the same. The Buddha and his disciple, noble disciple, they devoted all their time for the practice. Why well, you, you don't do the same thing, so how can you expect to have the same result? Right? Okay. See, right now, see, this time you come to Thailand and you devote your time to the practice. You go stay in a temple for five days. Yeah. Do this a lot more often. Do more. In order to do more, you have to give up your job, work less. Why do you have to work so much? All you need to work for is to support your life. You don't have to be rich, you don't have to have all the stuff that people do have, you know. You don't need them, you know. All you need is just enough money to, to feed your body, really. So find a job in which you don't have to work five days a week. Independent work, you know, like salesman, buying something and selling something. Don't, don't be an employee of a company. You know. Self insurance or something like that. Then you can pick the day you want to work and the day you don't want to work. Because all you all you work for is to to provide to provide your money with your your body with food and shelter. That's all. So you don't need much. You know. This is what you have to change if you want to have the time to devote to your practice. Of the four postures of meditation, which posture will be the most beneficial for attaining that enlightenment? The postures they they can they can be in any posture. It is it's not essential. The essential is mindfulness and panya wisdom. But people can attain in various postures. Standing, walking, sitting, lying down, any any posture. But when you first practice, when you first develop, avoid the lying down, because you don't have strong mindfulness, you will go fall asleep, and you will waste time that way. Mm-hmm. So for for beginners or people who has who don't have strong enough mindfulness, they will only stick with the three postures: standing, walking, or sitting. And you can switch around as you find appropriate. Because you cannot sit too long or walk too long or stand too long. You have to change your position in order to maintain your your, your body health. If you just use one certain posture for a long time, your body can become sick. So you have, you have to know the balance of the post balancing of your posture. But the the real practice is not in the posture, but
but in the mindfulness and in contemplation of the truth this is the real the real determinant the real, the real thing that will determine whether you become enlightened or not not in your bodily position posture Uh, can we practice uh, samatha and vipassana in one sitting together? Yes, after you've you come out of samadhi, then you can contemplate mm-hmm. without having to get up. But you cannot do the same t- thing, the same thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. If you want to do samatha, you have to stop thinking. See, if you want to use vipassana, you have to think. So when you do samatha, you don't think. But when you come out of samatha and you samatha and you might start thinking, then you can direct the mind to think in terms of vipassana. So separate. Yeah, they are separate session, but you can do in the same position. Yes. Or after you sit, when we, when you first sit, your mind becomes calm. Mm-hmm. But after a while, your calm disappears, and then you start to experience the pain in the body. Mm-hmm. Then you can use that pain as your object of vipassana. Mm-hmm. Investigate the the nature of pain. To see that is anicang tu kanganata, and when you see it truly, then you can li- let go of your attachment to uh, the pain, and then you will not be, your mind will not be affected by the the pain of the body, and that's vipassana in the same sitting position. Okay. 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 I think I'll turn this.